Between Egypt and Israel lies 10,000 square miles of some of the most treacherous terrain on the planet. Called the Sinai Peninsula, its searing heat and unfertile soil make it as inhospitable to habitation today as it was in biblical times. Yet for 40 years, a tribe of former slaves to the Pharaoh struggled against these hostile conditions in its quest to reach the Holy Land, a land promised the Israelites by their God. To assure the journey would succeed, however, their God demanded one condition be met. Would they live by his Ten Commandments? The great mystery of the Ten Commandments is how this seemingly simple set of moral rules became so central to all of Western civilization. Why have the Ten Commandments survived with such impact to the present? Do the laws against killing, theft, adultery carry the same meaning for us as they did for our ancestors? Why did Moses order the slaying of 3,000 fellow Hebrews at Sinai? And is it possible, as some believe, that tablets preserved in the sacred Ark of the Covenant actually exist? These are but a few of the mysteries of the Bible. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country to the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great. Genesis 12, 1. So God spoke to Abraham, thereby ordaining him patriarch of the Hebrew people. According to scholars who have traced the genealogy and ages of all biblical figures, this historic moment would have taken place 2,000 years before the birth of Jesus. Yet 2,000 years later, no nation had been formed by the tribe of Abraham. His descendants were now held in bondage in Egypt, a fact well documented in government records of the period. Had their God forsaken the Hebrews? Or, as the faithful believed, was he awaiting another unique mortal who could carry out his will? As a young man, Moses struck dead an Egyptian guard for beating a Hebrew slave and had to flee for his life. Years passed as he tended sheep in the land of Midian hundreds of miles east of Egypt. Then one day, he happened upon a bush that was a fire, but strangely not consumed by it. It was at this moment, according to the scriptures, that God selected the successor to Abraham. Then the Lord said, 
I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Exodus 3, 7. With God's counsel and aid, ten crippling plagues are brought upon the Egyptians. Moses then is able to lead an unarmed people away from a mighty military force, bringing them to safety. With the wondrous parting and closing of the Red Sea, their total freedom is assured. The Bible records their number at 600,000, and while not all were Hebrews, all now willingly fall under the leadership of Moses. Having reached the mountains in the desolate Sinai where God first spoke to him, Moses is told what is expected of him now. Now, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Exodus 19, 5. If Abraham was the patriarch, Moses has become the one to unite the people and bring them soon to the promised land. But how are we to regard this leading figure in the Bible? Was there a man of flesh and blood who presided over the astonishing exodus and imminent drama at Sinai? I believe in a Moses who lived and did much of what the Bible says about Moses, but I don't believe the Bible is intended to be a textbook of history. Moses saw God face to face, and that means that of all the heroes in the Bible, there is something unique, unrepeatable, special about Moses. With a mixture of awe and dread, Moses and the Israelites await the words of God that will shape their destiny. Now Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord had descended upon it in fire, while the whole mountain shook violently. Moses would speak and God would answer him in thunder. Exodus 19, 18. In a setting rich with mystery and ambiguity, the Ten Commandments are first delivered by God. Contrary to popular notion, Moses had not ascended Sinai. Along with the Israelites, he had received God's word at the base of the mountain. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, bow down or worship them. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor thy father and mother. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. 
You shall not covet your neighbor's house or anything belonging to your neighbor. Exodus 20, 2. These were and are the Ten Commandments. When God came to little Israel, so recently enslaved, having nothing, they said, yes, we will take this law code. Yes, we will take this Torah. And that will be the heart of who we are. Did Moses and his people understand the revolutionary implications of some of these commandments? Laws that would set them even further apart from Near Eastern cultures than they already were? In the 3,500 years since Moses led his people to Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments, no tangible evidence has been uncovered indicating upon which mountain rising from this blistering hot desert the historical biblical drama unfolded. Yet 300 years after the time of Jesus, Emperor Constantine was convinced that this forbidding site known to nomads as Jebel Musa, the mountain of Moses, was the holy place, and ordered a monastery built here to commemorate the event. It is known as St. Catherine's. On the summit above it stands a small church where some believe the commandments were